I was always impressed by people who could just fly up and down the fretboard so freely. How did they do it so fast? Did they know something I didn't know? Well, yes and no. Now, first of all, it's not about scales, at least not for me it isn't. Now, I knew my pentatonic shapes, for example, very, very well, and I knew that the bottom of one shape was the top of the other, but I still found it very, very difficult to move between one shape and then another, and then another, and another freely. It was difficult. And I know I'm not alone in this. In fact, I've had student after student, some quite advanced, ask me for help in connecting scales and moving freely across the neck. And yet I saw guys like Albert Lee and Vince Gill and any other country player who's pretty good move freely up and down the neck with seemingly total ease. How was that? Well, if I took one of those students who was asking about fretboard vision and I asked them to play scales across the neck, they usually had trouble. But when I asked them to play different chords across the neck, they could usually do it. And I can too. Eventually it dawned on me that these people flying all over the fretboard, they're not just using scales, they're using chords as a framework too. And that's big part of the secret is they're using chords, not just scales. But that's not the whole story. They're not just using chords, they're doing something with the chords as well. Now, when I thought of chords, I used to think about bar chords, big black bar chords. Now, there's nothing particularly wrong with those. They're great, but they carry a lot of baggage. There's a lot of notes, and let's face it, when we get in the upper registers of the guitar, they're kind of bulky to use and difficult. Instead, they're using something called partial chords, just little pieces of chords, usually two or three notes out of them. For example, instead of using this big bar A7, we could just use a little piece of it from the D, G, and B strings. Or instead of using this big bar D7, we could just use the same little piece of it on the D, G, and B strings. So that's where the yes and no comes in. Yes, I knew the chords. No, I didn't know how to use the little pieces of them, the partial chords. Incidentally, somebody once told me partial chords are not a thing. Well, they're good enough for Albert Lee, they're good enough for Guthrie Trap, so they're good enough for me. It doesn't have to be in some dusty old theory book for it to work. Let's take a look at a simple lick that uses this idea and then we'll really soup it up. This lick is based on a D7 chord, and there are three shapes and their associated partials. This chord, and its associated partial. This chord, and its associated partial. And this shape. and its associated partial. No doubt one thing you noticed is that we're hammering on a lot. Let's take a quick look. Let's take this form of the chord and this partial chord. And notice that if we played the top two strings, we could hammer into that partial chord by, by playing like that. That's hammering from the two into the third. And another thing we could do is hammer from the flatted seventh note into the root of the chord. It's kind of like we're hammering from the seventh into the major, like this. Those are just two examples. You can play around with the partial chords to see what other hammer-ons make a lot of sense. Armed with that idea, let's look at the whole lick. The lick starts out with a couple of hammer-ons. We're just using this partial chord and doing our hammer-on. Then it does this. Again, a couple of hammer-ons using this chord form. Then it does this. Same chord form, different hammer-on. And then finally it does this. That uses this chord form. And then it ends up using essentially a lick around this chord form. Now 
I know I could never play something at 225 beats per minute across all the fretboard without the concept of partial chords helping me out. But I said I was going to soup it up, so here it is with bends instead of hammer-ons. If you had fun with this, it's time to combine chords and scales together. So click this video because in it, I lay out a really clear and easy to follow process that you can use to really get moving. So click here. I'll see you in that video and I'll see you on down the road.